like to talk about the resiliency and fr fragility of ecosystems and how that depends on the interactions among organisms and how feedbacks can get amplified or dampened depending on uh, those um, interactions. And in particular, if an ecosystem depends on a few key species, it has a harder time responding than if there are more interconnections among uh, the organisms and more um, species that uh, play a key role in the ecosystem. So um, in this case, each circle represents a population of organisms, and each color represents the uh, uh, or populations of organisms that play a similar role in the ecosystem. So uh, like for example, here we just have one primary producer. Uh, we have primary and secondary consumers that eat the primary producers or primary consumers that eat those. And um, so we have like this whole interconnectedness among different organisms. So I'm going to hide the labels so that it's a little easier to see. And then we're going to go through and look at some of those interconnections in terms of the food web. So we have our primary producer here. And it's eaten uh, by these uh, different uh, types of organisms. All right. So obviously, if something happens to this primary producer and say it goes extinct, the whole ecosystem will go extinct because these organisms don't have anything um, to eat. Okay. So this would be uh, an ecosystem that depends on one population of organisms specifically. So these sort of primary uh, consumers uh, are eaten by others. And here I just show sort of a whole bunch of arrows, right, where among these, these different organisms, um, like for example, this, this red one here uh, has three different food choices with the arrows going into it. This one has two food choices and it feeds this one over here, which is eating from two different ecosystems and is feeding an organism over here, right? So it's all supported by this primary productivity. Okay. And then there are certain types of organisms that uh, eat others but aren't uh, necessarily preyed on themselves. We often call these sort of the top of the food web. So this orange population of organisms eats some from the blue and the purple. And when it dies, its resources go back into the ecosystem through degradation, but there's nothing that specifically preys on it. And I'm not showing the degradation here because it's already complicated enough. Okay. And then there's this group of uh, yellow organisms here that eat mostly from uh, one uh, type of organism, um, uh, but this one can also eat from organisms that play a different niche role here. Okay. All right, so we can think about these as groups of organisms that have these different functions in the, in the ecosystems. So I built my ecosystem off a model uh, from another one here. So let me show you um, what that looks like. So this is a real ecosystem where each number represents a different uh, set of organisms. And uh, you can see that there are many, many arrows and many more uh, populations among them. This partic particular ecosystem depends on a single primary producer. So it's from a lake and um, there's one uh, form of algae that provides most of the biomass that these other organisms um, tend to eat. So if something um, goes wrong and this primary producer um, can't 
uh, function in the environment, the whole ecosystem will collapse. So let's go back to our simpler food web and trace some of the dependencies uh, within it, right? So uh, if we, we can basically take some of these arrows and I'll just color them uh, red and this orange organism depends on a whole suite of other organisms uh, in the ecosystem. All right, so I've colored all the arrows red that this, this orange organism depends on. And there are a few organisms that it doesn't immediately depend on here. And there's a network of them out here that it doesn't directly depend on. But there's a lot of interconnection uh, between uh, organisms in this particular uh, food web. And so if something, for example, happened to um, this organism right here and uh, that went away, the or orange organism still has a, a path through the food web that can supply a large part of its food. Right. There are other organisms that are more important to the food web food web. So for, for example, this purple one right here, if this one went away, the orange organism would only have, would be very highly dependent just on this blue organism, which depends on the primary productivity, right? So this organism then becomes highly dependent on one other species or one other population of organisms. Right? So different, different organisms within an ecosystem play uh, different critical roles. We could, for example, say what, what happened if, if the orange organism itself went extinct. Right? Uh, this organism, the purple organism was eaten by it, so maybe its population would grow, and that might increase the population of these um, uh, lavender organisms over here, right? So if this one goes extinct, it can have repercussions for different parts of the food web. So we have this uh, food web that has a lot of interconnections um, and the ecosystem, depending on the organism that goes extinct, but it's fairly robust to uh, changes in populations of the organisms. Um, we can do another one that has uh, fewer organisms. So for example, let's get rid of a bunch of these interactions and then there are a few populations that don't have any food coming in or out. So we'll get rid of those. All right, so this is, this is a much uh, simpler food web and one that, that may, uh, for example, be more fragile to certain uh, types of environments. So, so for example, if in this case, if the if the orange population here goes extinct, there's nothing eating this purple population, and it eats primary producers, these um, primary consumers, as well as organisms um, higher up. So, this particular organism. Uh, would be a generalist. So if there's nothing that is actually consuming this generalist, it could actually draw down the populations of, for example, this, this organism. Maybe it makes this organism then go extinct, which then makes this organism go extinct, which then this organism would go extinct. And this one um, would, and then this would get less food. So now this generalist is only eating the primary producers, and that will basically um, extract resources, a lot of resources, into one organism that doesn't have a predator um, and pull those resources out of the rest of the food chain. So when you have uh, fewer connections among in, within a few food chain, 
And in particular, if you have generalists um, that do not have a predator, the food chain is significantly uh, more fragile. So, so we can make this into a specific example. Say, for example, this is a sea otter. It eats more than that. But let's make the generalist a sea urchin. All right. If the otters get hunted, for example, and go extinct, the sea urchins will eat uh, the kelp and algae, which are the primary producers. It will also eat all sorts of uh, other organisms uh, as it sort of graze in crusts, uh, as, it, as it eats things that encrust the seafloor, say, for example, um, including mollusks and things like that. Uh, this generalist, the loss of the, the predator can cause an explosion in the population of generalists, which then can cause the ecosystem to collapse. Okay. So there's a, there's a big difference between an ecosystem that is fragile because of the structure of how the organisms interact versus one that's more robust. So a uh, kelp forest is fragile in terms of the interaction of the sea otters and the sea urchins, whereas something like a rainforest uh, uh, is more robust. A rainforest has lots of primary producers in terms of different types of plants. Um, uh, there are uh, algae and cyanobacteria that grow in them as well. So there's a really large diversity of primary producers and lots of interconnections between all the different organisms. Even if we look back at this, at this pond, if you can increase the number of primary producers here, uh, then this m complex interconnection among organisms uh, is much more uh, resistant to change in ecosystem collapse.